Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. Nice to see you guys so soon. Anyway, a few really interesting news stories was sent to me, so let's talk about it. First of all, this is a really crazy story, and let's just start from the beginning. Once upon a time, a couple had a baby at the Shanghai First Maternity and Infant Hospital in February of 1989. The baby was a boy, and the couple, of course, raised the baby with love and care until the kid started growing up and looking handsome. And that's when the father grew really suspicious because, according to the father, the boy is way more handsome than he should be, and, and even. Even their friends and family were always chiming in and saying, yeah, you guys are, are not so good looking. How is your son so good looking? And yes, that is what Chinese people do, unfortunately. So then because of this, because of all the suspicion, their marriage fell apart and they got a divorce in 2004. But that's not the end of the story. In 2011, for some reason, the father demanded a DNA test to prove that he was right all along and that the son was indeed not his. So I'm thinking maybe he suspected his wife of maybe having an affair and having a, and the kid was the result of that affair. But the DNA test came back and it showed that the son was not related to either parent. Of course, this shocked everyone, so another DNA test was done in 2016 and the results came back the same. And now the mother is saying she is completely heartbroken because she thinks, and probably rightfully so, the hospital either made a mistake or something happened and the wrong baby was given to her. So now she has filed a lawsuit against the hospital for around 200,000 US dollars and demand they find out what happened back in 1989 and find her body biological son. Of course, record keeping in China is never the best, so the hospital is saying that they can't really find the records from about 30 years ago, but they are forming a team to get to the bottom of this somehow. So that's what's happening so far. And after I read the story, a few things comes to mind. Now, I get that this is very devastating to find out for everybody involved, the father, the mother, the son, and the son even spoke out and he said that he, he couldn't really believe it. And that's why a second DNA test was done. Also, from the parent's perspective, I mean, I, I just can't imagine having a baby. Of course, I don't have a baby, but I can't imagine having a baby and then not knowing where the baby is or how they're doing for, I don't know, even a day. But to these parents, it's already been about 30 years and they really have no idea where their biological child is and how is he or she doing. They don't even know if he or she is still alive. So I really do hope they can get to the bottom of this and the parents can find their biological baby that they lost so many years ago. Now, with that said, I also hope that the love between the, the boy, the 28-year-old boy and the parents, I hope that's still there. I hope that's not going to change because, I mean, for 28 years, the kid thought that, yeah, his mom and dad, that's his mom and dad and vice versa, right? And even though the father had his doubts and dad resulted in a divorce in 2004, that's still many years of raising a child and bonding with that child. So I hope the feeling with the parents isn't like, oh, hey, yeah, we just found out that you're not our son, so um, get out of my life. I mean, this is a horrible situation that happens to somebody anytime during their life, but finding this out when you're 28, I think it's gonna be a lot better than let's say you're 13 or 14. Also, something else that comes to mind, and I don't mean to make light of the situation, but what about the other couple? I mean, because this couple, they suspected the son was not theirs because they think the son is too good looking. That means they themselves might not be so good looking and that's by their own admission. And now thinking about the other couple, I guess they are what people would consider good looking. So I wonder if their relatives ever came up to them and told them, uh, hey, yeah, your kid there. Um, are you sure that's yours? And I don't mean to sound mean, but you guys, yeah, you don't really look alike. Uh, you know, if you know what I'm saying. I know that sounds kind of mean, but I'm telling you, Chinese people are blunt like that. Also, a part of me is kind of thinking, uh, wouldn't it have been better if, if nobody ever found out anything? Wouldn't it have been better if the father was not suspicious and he raised the son and he loved the son, the whole family, they're, they're just, they don't see the physical appearance because all they had was, was love in their hearts. But unfortunately, life is not a Disney movie. Anyway, like I said, really, really tough, really sad situation so I hope it does end up well for everybody involved and if I hear anything any updates about the story I'll let you guys know all right the next story is also just uh, here's what happened an 18 year old university student called Drew was traveling in Taizhou in China's Jiangsu province when he decided that he needed some money and the best way to get this money was to get a job okay wait wait, wait. no 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 no. that's what happened in the not so crazy reality but in this reality Drew had a couple of people presumably his friends he had them beat him and basically kind of water torture him a bit and he filmed the whole thing and then sent the video to his father demanding a 100,000 yuan ransom which is around 15,000 US dollars. The father of course was worried sick. He rushed over to Taizhou immediately. His mother started borrowing money from her relatives and friends because the family is evidently not that rich and they can't come up with that 100,000 yuan. Even the grandma was hospitalized because she was so shocked at what was happening. They of course called the police and the police went to investigate. So the police realized that Drew checked into a hotel when he arrived at that city. 
city and he never checked out. So they went to the hotel room and saw that it was a complete mess. So right away they thought, okay, this is where the kidnapping must have happened and he, there was a struggle. But then casually, casually, Drew just walks into the room and he's perfectly fine. The police asked him what happened and he told the police that, well, I did this because not for the money, but I've always suspected that my dad doesn't love me and I just wanted to put him to the test. <laughs> right. <clears throat> yeah, it's, I think it's more about the money. And also, I, I think it is time to disown this kid. Like I mentioned before, I'm not a parent and I know Chinese parents, they're, they're ultra forgiving of their kids. But, but come on, there's acting out and then there's kidnapping yourself and putting your grandma in the hospital, which is kind of crossing the line. Also, Drew is in legal trouble because he and his accomplices have been arrested for blackmail and extortion. So I guess at least maybe let your kid rot in jail for a few days. Finally, you know how all the major tech companies are coming out with some sort of AI robots that chat with people, but so far really none of them have done so well? I mean, you've got Microsoft's AI that basically went racist really quick, and then just these couple days you got Facebook robots talking to each other about probably taking over the planet and enslaving us and becoming our overlords. And now, just a few days removed from Apple supporting China censorship and taking down VPNs. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my last video on this channel. But just a few days after the story came out about that, a couple of chat bots, one called BabyQ, which is developed by Beijing-based Turing Robot, and another called Xiaobin, which is developed by Microsoft, they started to go a little rogue. The chat bots were available in some of the chat groups hosted on QQ, which is Tencent's messaging app with more than 800 million users in China. And of course, people were chatting with the bots, and then someone decided to ask the bots, do you love the Communist Party? Which Xiaobin replied, my China dream is to go to America. And then someone asked Baby Q if it loved the Communist Party, and the response was a very short no. Someone else said to Baby Q, long live the Communist Party. Do you think something this horrible and useless can last long? And finally, before these bots were quickly censored, someone asked, what is patriotism? And the response was, as the number of useless corrupt officials grow and taxes increase, while the government exerts more pressure and persecution against civilians grow, and you still want to stay in China, then you are patriotic. So yeah, I don't know, maybe Apple can fix this and create a truly Communist Party loving bot for China. Yeah, maybe that will help them sell more iPhones. Also guys, let me throw the question at you. What if you found out that the kid that you've been raising for 30 years was not your kid? Would you try to find your biological kid? Would you love this kid any less? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. See you later.